So in this video I'm briefly going to talk about this question which is if you've got um, a grid with some numbers in a 2x2 two two grid and player A selects the row and player B selects the column um, what's, the, uh, what's the best strategy for player A and what's the best strategy for player B um, so they don't see each other's choice so maybe A chooses row 1 um, and then B doesn't know that A has chosen row 1 and maybe selects row 2 and then where the two meet the row and column where they meet that's the score so for that particular round where player 1 chose row 1 and player 2 chose column 2 uh, the payout would be 3 and so if we think about uh, a, 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 in terms of probabilities B is the probability of selecting column 1 and B might it should be 1 minus B is the probability of selecting column 2 and similarly uh, a is the probability of, of player A selecting row 1 and 1 minus A is the probability of selecting row 2 and so if we think about the average payout for this grid um, it's going to be the probability of hitting the 1 which would be B times A times 1 uh, plus the probability of hitting the 3 which would be A times 1 minus B that's supposed to be 1 minus B times 3 and then uh, B, uh, B times 1 minus A times 4 and also 1 minus B times 1 minus A times 2 um, so I've written that down like this. Oh, um, uh, I'm. So what I do is um, to look at it algebraically. We're going to just call the, the the payoffs in the box is W, X, Y, and Z, and, uh, and then we can write. In terms of this W, X, Y, and Z, so I'll just resize this so that we keep both at the same time. So, so the payoff is uh, so I, I've, I've, what, I, what I've done is I've split it into two rows. So the first row is A times the probabilities for that row, and then it's one minus A times the probability. So this is the second row. This is the first row. To keep it simple. Um, so in the first row, obviously it's A times everything, so I've taken that out of brackets, A times B times W, B times W, so that's the first square, and then uh, A uh, times, so the A again is there, times 1 minus B, that's supposed to be 1 minus B, um, times X, so that's the probability of this square, and then go into the second row, 1 minus A times everything and it's uh, B for column 1, B times Y and uh, 1 minus B times Z um, or times the 1 minus A. So that's the, that's the average expected payoff. If you, if, you, if you stuck to those probabilities and played lots of times that's the average payoff. Now uh, Yes, so where W, X, Y, and Z are the squares here. So, um, doing some just expanding out those brackets and tidying it up a bit, we get this expression. So, what I've done here is I brought the A out of the bracket. So, this here is all the coefficient of A. And then this is if B was fixed, if we imagine that B was fixed, 
then this is simply a linear equation a times m m is this big thing here um, plus c which is this thing here but notice m and c don't depend on a so this is now a formula in terms of a times m plus c so for a given fixed value of b um, we can see the payoff for different values of a as being a straight line and now if we assume that player a seeks to minimize the payoff uh, then for a given b so if the b so so different b's are going to produce different gradients different m's now if the gradient that comes out is positive and player A is trying to minimize the score for a positive gradient the payout will be a line going that way but uh, yeah a line going that way so um, so then it would be best if A is trying to minimize just to select uh, A as being zero because that would be the smallest value in that line between zero and one because the probability has to be between zero and one um, so in other words and a probability of zero if a is zero what does that mean it means you never select uh, row one so you just would select row two so if this value is positive then the strategy for player a is to just select row two if this value is negative the opposite happens because it's sliding the other way the line is, is this way now it's, no it's, it's this way because you've got a gradient so it gets smaller as you go to the right so you want to make what so when m is less than zero uh, you want to make a equals to one and what does that mean that means you always select row one okay and now there's only one of the case which is what about when the gradient is flat well actually if we've chosen B in such a way that the gradient is flat it doesn't matter the payoff because it rem remember there's a graph of the payoff versus so if the x-axis is, is the value of A the y-axis is the payoff so if the line is flat the payoff's the same regardless of which A you choose so in other words it doesn't make any difference in the case when M equals zero what value of A you choose Okay, so when is m equal to zero? So we set this equal to zero, and when we rearrange, we get this. Uh, and notice we've got everything in terms of z minus x. Um, so z. I'm just going to fill. is probably the best. Thing. So z minus x, and then we've also got y minus w in the final expression here. So the we if we actually just call these values c1 for y minus w, so that's the column difference for uh, the first column c1. And the column difference for the second column is C2, which is Z minus X. Then we have a formula that the value of B, when this gradient is flat, um, is C2 over C2 minus C1. And then, because everything about this game is symmetrical, this is remember, remember this B minus 1 is supposed to be 1 minus B, so it is symmetrical. Um, we can actually do the same but go the other way and make uh, R1 the row difference for the first row which would be X minus W and R2 the row difference for the second row which would be Z minus Y um, and if we do that we'll, we should get exactly the same structure for the formula and for a simple example 1, 3, 4, 2 so a grid where we've got one three four two that we showed at the beginning um, if we put the numbers in 
we get that b equals a quarter and a equals a half. Okay. So this is a plot of those graphs I was talking about with the lines. So here the x-axis is the value of b. So here we're keeping a fixed and the x-axis is the value of b and the blue scatter point uh, here just uh, tells you one quarter it, uh, that basically tells you what the value of b actually is b is the, no the value of a, value of a. so um, so what we notice is that when this is here when a is equal to uh, a quarter of two which would be a half the line is flat and then it starts to curve downwards here so in all these cases where the gradient is positive um, The, here, these are all cases where the gradient is positive. Here, m equals zero, and here, all the gradients are negative. So we see that it actually starts off with a gra positive gradient. As we move across, as we increase the value of a, the gradient of the of the payoff line for b by selecting different probabilities um, flattens down, and then eventually takes the negative gradient. And there's this turning point at uh, a equals one half and uh, it becomes clearer if we have a look at the graph of the payoff in two dimensions in three dimensions so here if so if we're looking at it from the perspective of Right, so what are we looking at, at here? So this axis here is the value of B, the probability for B. This axis here is the probability for A. And, the pos and this axis is the payoff. And we can see that if we look straight in from here, so that the A dimension is going into the screen, um, what we can see is that the line, the lines are positively gradiented, and then they come down, and then they're negatively gradiented. Or so that the gradient changes. And at this point here, at b equals one quarter, which is the number we worked out, um, the line shifts to being uh, flat. So if we look at it from the other side, we'll see that A equals, so, so now this is with A at the front, and we can see that when A equals a half, so it's a halfway here, um, then again we get this, this turning point. And if we think about what this means, because here the, this is the A axis, and the axis going in is the B axis, and all these points are for different values of B, and we can see that the, the highest payoff is for, for, for B, because B can select any of the green dots. A just selects how far across this graph you are. So if it's selected at 0 0.5, it actually turns out it's the minimum of the maximum payoffs that Y could get. But 
it's also the maximum of the minimum payoffs that Y could get. Which means it doesn't matter whether you're going to try and minimize the payoff for player A and maximize for player B or the other way around. If you switch, the solution is still the same. And that solution for this particular problem uh, is B equals one quarter and A equals one half. So that was the point in the three dimensional graph. This little point here is the point A equals a quarter, B equals one half. So we can see it's from the B direction where, B, so this axis here we can see is the B axis because it's at 0 0.25 the dot. Uh, yeah, and the y-axis is the payoff. So you can see quite clearly that there's this curve. In fact, if I... Um, go to this uh, and add... So that it's more points. So that we can just see it. 